everyone. Uh, I am Archita Regan, as Anna mentioned, and I work as a technical consultant at Credera UK. So without delaying anything, uh, any further, I will go straight into uh, multi-cloud adoption. So what is multi-cloud? According to Gartner, the deliberate use of same type of cloud services from multiple public cloud providers. According to latest Flexera survey, 93% of organizations have already adopted multi-cloud. So despite of various complexities of multi-cloud approach, organizations are still moving towards multi-cloud. So in my presentation today, I am going to talk about benefits of multi-cloud, some implementation styles I've come across, and also considerations while adopting multi-cloud. So why are organizations moving towards multi-cloud? These are the key, uh, key benefits. The first one is to avoid vendor lock-in. So due to um, using multi-cloud, you can use, uh, organizations can use a lot of best and breed services from any cloud provider, and it avoids them to be locked in with one vendor. So that's the number one benefit. Second is, which is, uh, it's very uh, important benefit is to meet compliance standards. So a lot of the companies have, uh, especially in financial industries, that they have um, some compliance reason that uh, due to business continuity, they should be able to port their uh, IT infrastructure to any cloud provider. And for that, multi-cloud really works well. So the third is increased performance. So using multi-cloud architecture, you can use uh, you can have your workload close to the user, and which will reduce the latency and increase the performance. The fourth is using multi-cloud architecture. You can design your architecture so that it is it provides you high resilience and very scalable architecture. And the last that I have to mention, as we all know from last few years, there has been exponential increase in the number of cloud uh, services, and they are you know, getting innovated every single day. So there's more every, every new technology. So uh, having multi-cloud gives the organization flexibility to use best in breed services for their architecture. So how are organizations using multi-cloud? Multi-cloud isn't a black and white choice, nor one size fits all architecture. This is one of the quote I came across, and I really agree with this, which means organization has a complete autonomy on how they want to design their architecture using various services from different cloud providers. So I'm going to next section walk through a few of the implementation styles that I've come across in my experience. So the first one is workload segmentation. So this one really means organizations can segment their workload based on the use case. So a few of the examples is they might want to segment modern and legacy applications and have it in two cloud providers. They might want to have a segment due to regulatory reasons. And that can be any more, but these were the two uh, examples of how they can segment their workload. The second one is when organizations have all their infrastructure and data and IT in one cloud provider, and then they want to leverage and use a SaaS product. So in that case, they can move the data from uh, migrate the data needed to a SaaS product, which might be in another cloud provider, and use that for analytics or, uh, or more further processing. And the third is if you're if organizations are running critical applications and they want uh, it to be highly resilient, they can run the applications in two cloud providers and have it as either active active, active passive, or even public private. So next one is sharing data bet uh, between products. So this one has become very common use case. Uh, recently due to you know emerging use uh, built of data products um, and data platforms and uh, the large organizations. So this basically one department uses one cloud provider to build a data product and you have another uh, another department 
creating another data product. And then there's a use case. They want to share data for analytics. And then they need to share data between each other. So I wouldn't recommend this use case, but this has becoming increasingly common when you don't have um, a standard strategy uh, at the beginning. But this can also cause really high egress cost. So I'll come to the considerations later, but I just wanted to show this is one of the implementation style I've come across. And the sixth, um, the sorry, the fifth one is using a abstraction layer. So what it does is basically this is a layer that provides single platform. So you can manage all your Kubernetes cluster across different cloud providers, which allow organizations to focus on one single technology rather than relying on multi-cloud experts in multitude, uh, you know, proprietary cloud um, technologies. And the next one, uh, which is the last one uh, in my presentation is using a management layer. So this one provides high level of flex flexibility. Basically, it's a layer above all your cloud providers. And this really gives you choices of development framework, application services, so organizations can deploy and scale the application in seconds in your choice of private and public cloud. This makes it faster and easier to build, test, and deploy and scale applications. So these were a few of the implementation styles I've come across. There is no doubt that multi-cloud adoption has its complexity and it comes with its own challenges. But in that, in the next section, I'm going to talk about the key considerations we think you can use while adopting multi-cloud. So the first one is strategic factors and value. So multi-cloud drives agility, geographical connectivity, provides capability to create service differentiators. It create, gives you less ability to have bulk deals with your cloud provider and keep the cost down. But you can definitely uh, compare the cost between different cloud providers and have a constant monitoring to keep your clouds uh, to keep your costs down. So the main consideration here is organizations should understand why they are moving towards multi-cloud. What is the strategic factor and strategic drive behind adopting multi-cloud? The second is skills and knowledge. So there is no doubt that multi -cloud, implementing multi-cloud needs wide variety of skills. It is harder to acquire staff and build capabilities needed due to uh, the variety of skills needed. So the few things I've highlighted is DevOps skills is essential due to automation, testing, orchestration technique, and above all, you want a team who can communicate um, efficiently and satisfy your, and understand your customer's business uh, use case. Uh, and also you want a team, it's not about specific cloud technology. You want a team who can, uh, who has the ability to quickly master new technologies, uh, understanding of vendor services, knowledge of open source tools are highly useful. And the last point that multi-cloud drives towards having a multidisciplinary team. So you want a team who has different skills. It's not just about one cloud specific skills. Um, so, so those were the key things I wanted to highlight. So organizations might want to consider to invest in training and upskill their employees uh, so then they can create a um, you know, high performing team. The third is culture and mindset change. Adopting multi-cloud is very different from how traditional IT would work. So you need a culture of collaboration and innovation in every step of your multi-culture, the uh, multi-cloud adoption journey. You want a team who can quickly learn stuff and deploy new technologies. Also, the mindset should be more solution driven rather than finding constraints with the cloud provider technologies. So you say, how do we use the services to, uh, to drive innovation? And of course, uh, you have to mention Agile. So adapt Agile principles, uh, fail fast and learn fast. It's very easy to say, but 
is still a big culture and mindset change to be able to quickly prototype stuff um, and have uh, service deployed very quickly and organizations need to take that journey um, and consider these factors. Um, fourth one is operating model. So while adopting multi-cloud, as I mentioned in the previous slide, there's strategic factors, skills, and also uh, culture and mindset change, plus technology consideration that I'll come to. But all these changes really impact your operating model. You can't keep your operating model same and still drive and move towards multi-cloud um, and uh, you know adopt multi-cloud. So there is an there will be an opportunity with, to review your operational team due to automation. You might want to make your teams leaner, and also having a standard pre-approved templates uh, and self-service nature of multi-cloud uh, and using DevOps. You would find that team can focus more on customer's business issue rather than just trying to build some uh, technology which can't be reused. Um, so again, there's another, um, the focus definitely drives towards more customer oriented um, way of working. And the next one is pay as you go model. As you know, if you use any of, uh, while using any cloud provider, the cost is very transparent. So having the transparency of cost compared to the traditional Definitely, there's a room you can review the service, you can keep more control of your cost, and you can also switch to different services based on the costings. And the last thing to say is you can develop technology and get your product ready, but if you don't have the right operating model to support and get your product to the market quickly, you won't get the benefit of multi-cloud uh, adoption or basically having shorter time to market. So next, moving towards technology consideration, foundation services. So I really, really uh, recommend organizations to consider having a centralized uh, layer um, where you can have your logs uh, and you, know, you can merge all your logs and you can uh, basically detect any security issues. You can have um, relevant alerts. So, uh, right people can be notified about uh, any of the alerts uh, in that centralized foundation layer you can centralize your key management secret management certificates and which can drive consistency over different cloud providers and to another point to highlight under foundation services and is having pre approved templates uh, so team can self-service, take the template and deploy the infrastructure and application is always very useful. Um, and the last one is having a centralized service discovery layer above the clouds, different cloud providers to be able to manage your service better and drive uh, more transparency and consistency. The next is cloud security. So security is key uh, consideration while moving towards just cloud, not even multi-cloud, but for multi-cloud, it um, is a, again a mindset change of how you manage security. So it's important to consider role-based access control and have a permission model map for each of the cloud providers. Consistent way of how to manage user access uh, across different cloud providers, and more mindset change to move towards application-level security control. Um, and it's important to consider how you will authenticate and authorize interaction between applications uh, hosted in different cloud providers and ideally federate in a way that enables service in one cloud provider to interact with another one. The next is DevOps. I've touched about DevOps in a few bits, uh, but the key highlight is having a consistent DevOps tooling, CI, CD toolings, and using infrastructure as a code is essential um, in having a consistent and having a successful multi-cloud adoption. The next thing is automated enforcement of security policy. Yeah, more automation, the better, less error-free, and it makes it easier to port 
services, policies from one cloud provider to another. So definitely another consideration. And the last one is, again, automation, automation. Uh, create an automatic deployment process for your workloads. Uh, and this can really drive a core orchestration benefit across the workloads and it will help to have a smoother release automation, patching, upgrades, and help uh, for disaster recovery. And the last one, the mention of cost optimization. So organizations can um, do many things and to make sure that they have cost in control, uh, have a multi-cloud dashboard so everybody can see what we are spending, having alerts, and having a set forecast uh, and then alert so you are on top of your cloud cost. And also another consideration is rethink how you want to manage your IT cost because clouds gives you the flexibility to manage your, uh, you can do it at department level, you can do it across cloud. So how do you want to manage your cost? Um, that's something that organizations have to rethink. Um, and just to mention that, although you can't get bulk deals, uh, you, uh, but it's important to agree and negotiate a commercial model with, with your vendors and work collaboratively and see how you can agree a model that works uh, with your um, uh, with your you know with your model basically. Uh, and the last one is you can use instant scheduler, uh, automatic tagging. So you tag every resource you create and uh, have some kind of, these are just a few examples where, and you can connect your uh, tags to the dashboard and you will be able to get a better view of your costing. So it's just transparency, monitoring, alert, and can help you be on top of your cloud cost. With this, this is a summary of all the key considerations. There might, there might be more considerations by focus to keep it uh, to the key ones. And with that, I would like to conclude uh, my presentation today, which says there is no one size fits all. Virtually all organizations are already operating in multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment. Multi-cloud comes with its complexity and the complexity of multi-cloud would continue to grow with new services and a lot of innovation in this space. Creating a centralized foundation layer will drive consistency and standardization across the cloud providers. Your multi-cloud strategy should address your business needs and lay a solid foundation for managing multiple cloud deployment. Next, multi-cloud implementation should not be just technology driven. You need the right operating model, culture mindset, and skills to support uh, your organizations and team towards uh, while adopting multi-cloud. Thank you. Thank you so much, Archita. Thank you for this insightful presentation. And make sure to join the info session with Credera's team starting in 30 minutes. Maybe, Archita, you're also going to join there. Are you planning or the booth? Yeah, they'll be open to uh, you know join the booth uh, for any questions people have. Absolutely, yeah, fantastic and perfect timing. I see there are so many positive comments from different people in the chat for you. So thank you so much, great one. Thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to prepare this very interesting presentation and to share it with us today at the Women in Tech Global Conference. So super excited that you joined today. So thank you so much. As mentioned, it was a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of the conference and then see you at the Cruderas uh, meet and greet session and maybe even the booths. I will also share your LinkedIn if you don't mind with the audience. So if they want to connect, follow up, ask questions, they can do that. Does it sound good? Yeah, sure. Very happy to take any questions and uh, really delighted to be part of this uh, Women in Tech conference. Uh, and yeah, very happy for people to come with any questions and any chat. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.